All right, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna monologue a bit. So, um, I'm today. I've been thinking back to like my first videos I posted on the site. It was a really good outlet because I felt really low in my life. And I want to talk about something very important because it's like you know I've fallen into this trap. I figure monologue because I'm driving, so I can't be looking at my phone or anything. I'm watching the road, but it's like so. Try to get back on Facebook again, right? Because I've done videos in the past just staying off social media. Being on YouTube is kind of nice. You're actually kind of anonymous because it's not like I found friends. I found people from all over the web who don't even know each other. And that was the great thing about YouTube. That's what I like about YouTube. Facebook's a little too addictive, and I'm going to get to that. It's like, it's an addictive alter ego. The crazy thing is, you know, 2007, that's when I first got on Facebook. And see, I was always the anti-social male. I didn't know how to talk to people, you know, and and that was the part of my life pre-transition too. So it's like I didn't know how to talk to women I was attracted to. All growing up, and it's I remember when I was little, girls talked about my eyes and my hair. So girls would always come up to me, and it's like I never learned how to talk to women, right? And it cripples you the older you get and the less you know. Because, see, as men, as we get older, there are expectations for us. That's an important thing. That's why responsibility is a big part of it. But it's like, you know, all you younger guys, you got to have purpose in life, right? See, I'm more like a cautionary tale, but I can own that. But I feel like YouTube, I can really express myself a lot better. So Facebook, let me get back to that. 2007, I finally form, right? And this is what I'm at college. So I go to class, but you know what? I didn't do homework and I didn't study. I got on Facebook, I got on political groups. And back to my anti-socialness, like growing up, I always got the whole entire, uh, like, Josh, you never talk. And the thing is, whenever I finally wanted something to say, it was really well thought out. Like, no one ever heard me. On and on. And it's like, you try less and less when you feel like no one hears you. And so it's like the silent rage that builds. And it's a really silent rage. It's a slow burn, you know. Uh, Right, so you get older and older. You know, I get through, you know, I go through college, I dropped out. And then I went back and I dropped, I never figured it out. You know, but I'm glad I don't have any student debt. Uh, God, college. Why did I go to college even? I mean, because that's what you did after high school, right? Oh, and there's the silent rage, because it's like, told since I had a gift for singing I was in choir right and then I was told you know try for a choir scholarship that way you can go to college right and I really wanted to play bass but it's like you got a scholarship for bass or something but it's like well there was jazz band but then I was like oh I might as well be a music major since I'm studying this much so you got to take theory and then and before I knew it, I was taking all these classes to cover scholarships, right? And I don't have any core classes. And I'm kind of bumbling around because, like, I don't know. It's that antisocial thing, too. Like, I love playing music, but specifically on the bass. This is where a lot of the real silent rage comes from because it's like... When you specifically pick the bass, it isn't because you were the guitarist, but then you're the least talented guitar sometimes they say it's like no I specifically chose the bass over the guitar and the bass is capable of so much and I think by myself practicing I kind of work on my own stuff but it's like when you play bass you gotta real, be real disciplined and it has been a blessing that I've been able to get gigs over the years and you know covers originals right always joining bands that does take up a lot of time uh, see, the silent rage is there's so much stuff I want to play on bass. I'm limited to functional bass lines, right? But that silent rage of wanting to play my own stuff.
but it's like it takes up so much time doing everything else. Plus, I've always worked day jobs, right? So it's like, what do I do? Because the stuff I really want to do is just like withering on the vine. And before I know it, my entire life is doing stuff I don't want to do, even though I'm playing music. But it's like, living with my parents, music was really an outlet because it's like, they wanted me to be in choir and everything. It was like, bass is what I really love playing. It's like, that really was my outlet. But when I try to play bass in bands, I don't know, I don't think I was ever assertive enough or forward enough to be like, hey guys, I got a song, can we learn it? I was never forward enough like that. So there's that silent rage. It's building more and more. You know, so Facebook, especially when you're in politics, politics are very volatile. And when you have a way with words typing stuff on a screen, I mean, you can get reactions. It's addictive, right? So recently in my life, I finally just deactivated it. I'm like, you know, I'm staying off. I kept Messenger on because that's how everyone communicates. You know, but that kept me lingering on. But then finally I did return to Facebook. And it's been like over a year and it's like, man, I'm wasting so much time. And it's like, I'm aware people don't like what I am, but part of me was angry enough that I'm like, how do I explain to them that I'm just doing satire without ruining the bit? You know? It's kind of annoying. I'm really working out a bit. And for some reason, so many people that have known me and call me a friend, they don't really say it to my face at all. Like, I don't know, man. If politics can blind people, right? I don't know. It's a crazy, silent, confusing rage. I don't know, I'm a cautionary tale to all you, uh, antisocial kids because it's like here's the thing it's a terrible burden to realize how antisocial you are but it's like yeah you don't want to get into that rage where it destroys everything man don't want to do that I don't know because it's like it's not really one thing it's just built up over the years you know you can't let the silent rage just, it's addicting, right? Because, like, that's why I love the Godzilla analogy. And really, I was looking at one of my Godzilla figures the other day. I started kind of making sense of that. It's like, because Godzilla, he appears out of the ocean, and he's, like, radioactive. He's supercharged. Right? <laughs> he destroys cities and everything. And then he fights other monsters. they got different powers, right? Ah, oh, man. Social media is really addicting. And it's kind of like that, because... It all started with groups. And anyone remember forums? There was a certain wit and art form to throwing memes at each other. Sometimes you can be real edgy with each other. I think the thing with social media, we lost our anonymity. But we kind of stayed stuck on that because it really is like, it's not the real world, you know? Dave Chappelle, he said it best, you know? Twitter isn't a real place, you know? But you antisocial males, like, your life... In recent years, one of the happiest times of my life was when I was actually off Facebook. It's like, dude, I mean, if you want to get into the metaphysical aspects, those of y'all that... I mean, there's a Christian way, I, I guess, way to interpret it. You could say, you know, there's a demonic element to the uh, alter ego, you know, it's like an idol, right? frustrating and you can tell when people are being very I don't know there's a certain passive aggressive nature I always always try to err on the side of comedy but sometimes you gotta try out stuff and I don't know cause it's not like you can just blame everyone else you know you're obviously blaming you need to blame yourself if you're like causing chaos but you know it's all about learning and presentation this is for all you antisocial males out there, because I know that a lot of detransitioners, because those of us that transitioned from male to female, and then we went back to male, right? We're very unique. We're very unique. How many guys can like openly, right? Because we are guys, right? That's what we are. We've returned to our state of nature. Of course, if you believe in God, the way God created you. Yeah. 
and uh, maybe that's why I keep doing this because I know I've made an audience and I've tried to be real positive like I've noticed I've always tried to be really positive on YouTube now maybe comments if I go on other videos and that's what the addiction is I don't know what it is maybe I don't know, feeling unheard but if I have actual words out there people will finally see what I'm trying to say I don't know, in, uh, in St. Paul he does write in, in one of the epistles, you know. I can speak in all kinds of tongues, but if I'm a clanging gong, what what use is it? Right? I mean, yeah, that's the thing, you know. The alter ego on Facebook, because that's what it is. And you are responsible for it, but it's addictive, right? You know? And here's the thing, there's a way forward, because I know people that are alcoholics that have to quit. And you hate what the alcoholism does to them, but you still love them. But you know what, they quit the alcohol, and they become a better person. It's it. So it's like, you know, Facebook was my, uh, alcohol in a way. Man, it's like, I can't help it. And the whole reason I got back on, it's like, a lot of musicians in it, they all use it. The market's different, you know, music is consumed very differently. I never figured out anything. But, anyway, YouTube, I feel like I've been able to be really positive with my videos, so I want to say this is an unofficial announcement. I am working on an album of original material that I'm very happy to just, I don't know, I guess you could say the complete artistic freedom to present something I always wanted to. Because my music wasn't, it didn't really have the best market value. I can admit that, and music is consumed so differently. I mean, because I'm into vinyl, uh, classic rock, you know, I love classical music, I love jazz, you know, I never fit in with my generation, you know, some of the people my age, they were into Blink-182 and Green Day, I'm like, hmm, no, it's rocking out to Zeppelin and Rush, you know, I never fit in with anyone, and then, of course, I'm in the hipster generation, but it's like, I genuinely like that music, I listen to all their albums, I didn't care how mainstream it was, to like, dude, Stairway to Heaven's still a good song, you know, it wasn't some hipster, like, that was, Ugh. you know, Stairway to Heaven's still a good song, okay, the joke is you shouldn't play it at Guitar Center, I can get that, so, but yeah, yeah, and I social males, like, find some hobbies, because it's like, you don't have to please anyone, you really don't have to please anyone, but if you find something you really like, you cultivate it and build it into something really good, you know, and that's where respect comes from. Right? You know? So, I just want to say that, and I wasn't sure where I was going with this. It's a stream of consciousness. But, um, yeah. I think it is time to, uh, sign out. So, until next time, have a good one.